wanna. No. Mm-mm. No. Uh -huh. Hey my fellow friends, it's Chris from Shughead Gaming, and I'm bringing you my review for Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, developed by Respawn Entertainment and published by Electronic Arts. Medal of Honor Above and Beyond released for PC VR December 11th on both the Steam and Oculus storefronts for an estimated price of $60. Of course, that depends on your region. The Medal of Honor series is the granddaddy FPS military shooter and still stands as one of the great shooter series in all of gaming history. Unfortunately, it lost its way over the years and is often forgotten in conversations dominated by Call of Duty and Battlefield. Originally planned as a return to form for the series on flat gaming platforms, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond did an about turn and has now been built from the ground up to deliver a World War II experience we could only have dreamed about back when the first Medal of Honor title hit the PlayStation 1 back in 1999. Developed by famed AAA developer Respawn Entertainment, this latest Medal of Honor entry was not only developed by members from the original PlayStation title, but also includes talent that worked on such successful shooters as Titanfall, Apex Construct, and Call of Duty itself. The hype is huge for this, so stay with me while I tear this down and see if this once great series shines now in VR. As always guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It not only helps out my channel, but VR gaming as a whole. And if you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing. And for video updates, make sure you hit that bell icon. Kicking things off, let's take a look at graphics. With one of the largest production budgets ever for a VR title, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond is a beautiful VR title that certainly puts that money up on the screen. Now this is still a VR title, and a rather ambitious one at that, providing wide open, highly detailed environments that not only need to work in the more cinematic settings of the main campaign, but also in the 12 player online PvP side of the game. As such, this still isn't likely to be confused with some of the hyper real visuals seen in the most recent entries from Call of Duty or Battlefield, but it's getting within spitting distance to be sure. In fact, I think it might be by choice here, as Above and Beyond seems to be going for a similar art style of those early Medal of Honor entries, with an approach that is certainly grounded in reality and authentic to the time period, but through the lens of an almost movie serial from the 30s and 40s. As a result, character designs and animations definitely come off a little more gamey, and the world design as a whole is something that wouldn't look out of place on the recruitment promo poster at the time. But this style always worked for Medal of Honor, and certainly still works here, delivering a game world that feels at times like a romantic homage to old World War II movies of old, while bursting with rich detail and atmosphere. In fact, it is that level of detail and sheer variety in weapons and set pieces across the campaign and multiplayer modes that are likely to blame for much of the rather bloated game install size of 180 gigabytes. Yes, 180 gigabytes. That being said, when experiencing some of this game's absolutely insane set pieces, whether that be running through a bomber plane and taking the gunner seat, then parachuting to safety, or rushing the beaches at Normandy, I would gladly sacrifice my SSD to the VR gods. Texture detail is one thing, but what really takes the visuals here to the next level is the game's use of lighting and particle effects that, like good special effects in movies, often go unnoticed simply because they feel like they belong. And whether lovingly painted into textures or happening real-time in-game, the lighting passes here are often incredible, giving me more than a few holy crap moments. This is big budget VR and often reference quality for the medium, especially when considering the scope and scale. If you have the hardware to run it, however. Because in order to experience this in all its glory, one must have a pretty decent gaming PC, with the recommended specs coming in around a 2080 GPU, an i7-9700K, and 16 gigs of RAM. And while I fully support the need for PC VR to sometimes just show off and not cater to the lower end specs, here I can't help but feel some optimization could be made, as there seems to be little in between spec-wise between the game running beautifully or being a low-res, low-FPS mess. A point that as a reviewer is hard to pinpoint as the game has just one quality slider in the graphics settings and is supposedly doing a lot of auto adjustments behind the scenes to optimize the experience, and by doing so, removing the ability to tweak it ourselves. A point I found particularly frustrating for even on the highest visual setting, I found the visuals to still look a little soft and blurry in the headset. Not a problem to be sure when viewing the ultra sharp social screen in this footage, but in order to achieve anything remotely close in the headset, it required me to go into Steam VR and increase both super sampling and my headset's resolution multiplier. An option I realized I am afforded running the game on a 3080 and not something I think should be required to make the game ready for prime time. 
and while I found performance to be pretty solid when in single player campaign, I found myself backing off these increased settings once in multiplayer where I did find some frame drop issues. As such, optimization and some visual tweaks to fix some awkward gun clipping should hopefully be in short order, as what is here often makes for mandatory VR. Unfortunately, in its current state, it is also elitist VR that doesn't feel like it needs to be. And as a game with a substantial multiplayer component, it is a numbers game when finding a player base, something this game will undoubtedly struggle with unless it can be patched to be scalable across a greater section of the PC VR community. Sound is up next. If you've played any of the prior World War II entries in the Medal of Honor series, then you know how iconic its classic orchestral score is. The John Williams-esque soundtrack, composed expertly by famed composer Michael Giacchino, did such an amazing job at making the video game feel epic, fun, and comfortable, all while feeling so appropriately time-appropriate, and stands as one of the first times a video game score really floored me with its film-like quality. And hell yeah, Michael Giacchino returns here in Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, reprising his role as composer, hitting me right in the video game feels and transporting me back to 1999 with another outstanding score. A move that for me alone immediately elevates Medal of Honor to a certain level of quality. Fortunately, this trend continues with what is not surprisingly a first-rate sound mix that doesn't compromise for VR, with fantastic weapon sounds and a bombastic sound mix that you honestly have to experience in a great set of headphones to appreciate how insane some of the moment-to-moment -moment scenes can feel in the headset. With the 3D mix here cranked up to 11, I dare you to not smile as some of the greatest moments of World War II not only appear around you, but sound like they are, a factor that is also a huge win when taken into the multiplayer side of things. Voice acting is also, given the game's budget, not surprisingly very solid, delivered by a cast of top-tier voice talent that does its best to deliver, despite the rather generic dialogue and story beats. This shortcoming aside, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond is every bit a triple-A game in the sound department, doubling down on what set the Medal of Honor series apart from other shooters two decades earlier, by taking gamers and putting them right inside their very own cinematic World War II epic. And that brings us to gameplay. Medal of Honor Above and Beyond often feels like the tale of three different experiences, coming in the flavor of the single-player campaign, the multiplayer suite, and the franchise staple of the documentary-styled gallery. The single-player campaign is definitely the focal point of the game here, offering up a 6-8 hour campaign that is split into a prologue and 6 additional chapters, each of which are broken down further into another 6 action beats, or moments, in the story. Unfortunately, it is this chopped up nature of the single-player campaign which hurts the game the most, as you are rarely just given the objectives and set loose in the level. Instead, we are all too often handheld through a series of smaller action scenes, broken up by loading screens and long dialogue sections of exposition that all too often dragged on, and consequently ruining much of the game's pacing. And while I appreciate that some of these epic and involved scenes are broken up in order to run in VR, it's often used to tedium. Case in point, an early mission had me parachuting into a forest area in which I had to shoot a few soldiers while hanging in a tree. Cut to a dialogue scene in which I am told to cut myself down and follow said soldier. Shoot a few more Nazis then, stuck into another dialogue scene. Here I am told we are holding up a supply caravan and to wait for the sign to attack. A few more dead Nazis and less than five minutes later, another dialogue scene, and then a loading screen. Now, this does get slightly better as things progress into the second chapter, as the game gets slightly less handholdy, but the game continually struggles to find a balance between narrative, setting up epic action scenes, and actually just letting you play the game. Which is a shame, because the reason I found this so frustrating is the game and the gunplay itself can be ridiculously fun, as it straddles the run-gun-sneak foundation of the original games in the series while embracing some tried-and-true VR shooter mechanics. 
If you've ever played a two-handed FPS shooter in VR, then you will feel right at home here with the manual reload mechanics and the option to store up to two rifles on your back, a secondary on your hip, and grenades holstered on your chest. And while I feel Respawn nailed the shooting and reload mechanics for this style of shooter, I found the storage system of weapons on your body infuriating at times, with grab zones that are far too forgiving, causing me to pick up and switch out weapons when simply grabbing for a grenade, a problem that is accentuated by weapons that are also auto-holstered when swapping or letting go of. An easy fix in a future patch to be sure, but an example nonetheless of something that I encountered quite often in my time with Medal of Honor, in that while this is no doubt a game developed by a AAA developer with deep pockets, it certainly rings true of it being their first foray into VR as well, with quite a few examples of small and not so small missteps and omissions on the gameplay side of things that other VR developers just aren't making anymore. Which is a huge reason why I have advocated for big studios to get into VR now and make mistakes on smaller games rather than massive franchises where they can simply say, see, it didn't work. Fortunately, Medal of Honor Above and Beyond manages to still pull off a win here in the single player campaign despite some control issues as it is often so ridiculously epic, big budget and fun. Yeah. Shooting Nazis is surprisingly still a ton of fun, and incredibly satisfying here, reminding me of GoldenEye times in all the best ways. Which brings me to multiplayer, and the area where I feel Medal of Honor Above and Beyond could use the most work, but could also be, with a little time, absolutely great. With 12 fantastic, intricate, diverse, and large maps, 5 game modes, and a very solid gun game, Medal of Honor has the foundation for a ridiculously addictive PvP VR shooter. Unfortunately, Foundation is the key word here, as it often feels woefully undercooked, with a loadout system that essentially lets you pick one gun and sends you on your way, and that's on top of zero level progression and no character customization. Add to this wonky spawn areas and an overwhelming feeling that they kind of just gave up on making this mode what it could be, with a real lack of spit and polish being applied here to make this feel like its own distinct part of the game, rather than just an afterthought. A problem that is also very evident in the game's survival mode, which is essentially just a single player horde mode that could have been a ton of fun given some effort was put in. And this I find incredibly frustrating given the foundation is so solid here, as many times during my online testing I was reminded regularly how much this old school style of PvP scratched the golden eye itch most modern shooters simply overcomplicate. Unfortunately, like an absentee parent, Respawn has given us some maps and guns and told us to just go entertain ourselves. And while it's still fun, I fear it will be short-lived if not developed further by the team over at Respawn. Medal of Honor Above and Beyond is controlled using two motion controllers and can be played seated or standing. With standing being highly recommended for if, like me, you hate click turning, this will be the only way you can achieve normal turning, as smooth turning simply isn't an option here. Surely a real blow for gamers who don't want to have to be action stars in their own living rooms. Thankfully, you can run here in Medal of Honor, in fact a point I loved as it actually replicated the actual vertical hop experienced when running in real life, an inclusion that will most likely make those with weak VR legs barf but have no fear as that can be turned off, in addition to other comfort options being turned on. But no going in, there is no teleportation mechanic present. Tracking here is pretty decent, although I would say I ran into slightly higher occlusion issues here with my Quest 2 than in other current titles like Contractors and Population 1, a matter made even more apparent by weapons in-game clipping through the headset at times, and the odd visual choice made here of giving our hands wrists, but just wrists. A choice that often made for wrist chunks in my face when aiming down the sights on certain guns. And no Medal of Honor game would be complete without the third part of the package here in the form of the Gallery, a documentary of sorts that you unlock parts of by playing the campaign. This wonderful selection of shorts allows you to sit in your HQ and watch interviews with living World War II veterans as they share their stories of tragedy and heroism, and then, in a move that I found very moving, the documentary crew took some of them back to Europe to revisit previous battlefields and villages, and in doing so, not only adding some real weight to their stories, but the gameplay itself. A staple of the series, the Gallery often struck me as as being totally a little off, introducing me to the realities of war and then telling me to go have fun in it. But it is regardless an important part of Medal of Honor Above and Beyond and an award-winning documentary in its own right. And finally, that brings us to Fun Factor in my final review. Since I first started playing VR more than four years ago, a constant request from the community has been when will we get a Call of Duty or Battlefield title in VR. Shockingly, EA answered the call first, bringing the dormant Medal of Honor series to VR. The result is an insanely beautiful game with high production values and some really fun gunplay that unfortunately feels like it could have benefited from some more focus testing and some additional time to fully develop its multiplayer component. As you guys know, I hate numbered review scores and instead review games on a scale of buy it, burn it, or wait on it. I honestly found this one a really tough one to score as I am a firm believer that full VR games should be priced as full games. 
Make no doubt about it, Medal of Honor is a full title with a single player campaign that while flawed is reference quality VR, and easily has as much depth as anything Call of Duty or Battlefield have put out in recent memory. That along with a top tier World War II documentary, and for some that might be enough right there, as Medal of Honor has never been known for its multiplayer anyway. However, the one and done nature of the campaign will lead many to look at multiplayer for replay value, and it is here where I feel Medal of Honor is simply not finished, and an area I truly hope Respawn focuses on developing properly in the coming months, for as it stands, it is a weak ass effort coming from a developer with so much experience in this type of shooter. Unfortunately guys, the online lobbies during my post launch testing have been dead, with most matches not even half full. Cyberpunk and price are likely an issue here, but I think it has more to do with the undercooked online portion and the need for further performance optimization. Like I previously said, I have no problem with high spec games and full price games, but the game needs to be worth it, and right now this isn't. This is certainly some next level VR that you need to try, but I say wait for a sale, or at least until Respawn decides to finish what they started. Anyways guys, that's it for me, thanks for supporting the channel, if you like this video please hit that like button, and if you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing. Thanks for stopping by guys, and I'll catch you on my next video.